Good morning, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Happy Sunday. I hope everybody's having a blessed uh, day. Go Dolphins. And I'm so happy to share this uh, message on our gospel this morning. My sermon is entitled, The Tension Between Justice and Forgiveness. The 18th century English writer Alexander Pope coined the phrase, to err is human, to forgive is divine. I think in our context today, it is really relevant for our gospel at hand. You see, as humans, frail with sin, we are predisposed to erring, making mistakes, hurting others, not being cognizant of our actions, or being 100% cognizant and still choosing to sin. To forgive really is divine. Think about it. What causes us to forgive others? What possible reason do we have to forgive someone that has wronged us? Especially if the offense was really great. Now, sure, it is easy to forgive our friends family, or someone we benefit from. Jesus said if we treat others well, who treat us well, what difference does that make? We are, Remember he said we are no different than anybody else. But we are Christians, and we are radically different. Because we forgive. Jesus Christ calls us to forgive. It really is divine. Because we are accepting some injustice for the sake of peace, reconciliation, perhaps. It is divine because it is something we are not naturally predisposed to. You know, we, 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 we want justice. We want retribution. We want revenge. So why does Christ in our gospel today tell Peter to never stop forgiving? What does forgiving do? Just as we talked about last week, you know, with the, the, the law, God's law, and um, its purpose to preserve human relationships, preserve our relationship with God, one another. Forgiveness's chief goal is to also restore relationships. God forgives us of our sin because he wishes to be in relationship with us, to love us, to guide us in repentance, and show us his unconditional and limitless love. We are indebted to God because our sin is a debt we can never pay. Just as the wicked slave's debt in our gospel today was one he could never pay. Forgiveness often means showing mercy to the debt people owe us. You know, that is why some translations of the Lord's Prayer says, Forgive us our debts. Remember Jacob's plea to God in Genesis chapter 4, verse 13? After um, he killed his brother Jacob, I mean, no, Esau. <laughs> yeah, after Jacob killed his brother Esau out of jealousy. Jacob asked God to spare his life and says, My sin is greater than I can bear. Sometimes our sin can be more than we can bear, more than we can ever pay back or provide restitution for. Sometimes there really is no punishment to fit the crime. It is just as in our parable today, the wicked slave could never pay back the 10,000 talents. You know, one talent was 15 years' wages for the average slave. But the master forgave him, showed him exceeding mercy and forgiveness. 
Christ died for our sin on Calvary, our great sin, our great debt. Bear the penalty and the pain and sacrifice so that we will not have to pay the penalty for sin and that we are made right, justified and unblemished through God's grace in faith in his son, Jesus Christ. When we forgive others in our lives who have wronged us, who can never fix the traumas and the damage and the pain they caused, we are following that divine edict from God to work for peace and restore relationships. Forgiveness, too, is a sign of faith. God calls us to forgive others and not worry about the consequences because God has a plan for our lives. It is faith in God's plans. Just in our first lesson today, remember Joseph's brothers begged to him to forgive them for the wrong they did to him. And then, you know, they add insult to injury when they even lie to Joseph and say, hey, you know, your our, our dad, Jacob, before he died, said, please forgive your brothers. But Joseph didn't let that tomfoolery bother him. Joseph was God's faithful servant. He was a faithful man. You know, and Joseph said to his brothers in these immortal words, do not be afraid. I am in the, am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do me harm, God intended it for good in order to preserve numerous people as he is doing today. So let us also practice and follow Christ's command to forgive for the sake of God's plan in our lives and also for the lives of others. Have faith God will set things right and restore all. Now, you know, Peter, I, I wanted to comment on this. Christ said to Peter, forgive 70 times 7. You know, 7 is a sacred number for wholeness. And when we forgive others, it allows us to be whole again, emotionally whole. We can move from a place of darkness and hate into a place of light where peace and faith in God's plan exist. Our emotional well-being is whole through forgiveness as well. But let's just comment quickly on what does forgiving look like? Is it kissing and making up? Not exactly. And I think that is the biggest hang-up and most misunderstood concept about forgiveness. Forgiveness does not mean letting a person back into our lives necessarily or full reconciliation. We can fully forgive a person and release them to God, move on with our lives, and feel God's cleansing and peace. Another misconception to forgiveness is whether a person, whether it's contingent on if a person wants our forgiveness. Do you think people throwing stones at the first Christian martyr, Stephen, desired his forgiveness? Do you think Christ's tormentors desired forgiveness? Remember the words of our Lord, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We are not called to forgive only if others respond to us the way we want. We are called to forgive because we are children of a forgiving God. As difficult as it is to follow, forgiveness changes us. It cleanses our spirits, reconnecting us to joy. Forgiveness does not discount the hurt that was caused by others. But rather, it means choosing not to give the hurt power over our lives anymore. Forgiveness brings life from death, shines light in the darkness and despair and stops the cycle of violence. Total contrary to the world's bloodthirsty ways. 
to err is human, to forgive is divine. So as us Christians who have benefited from the generous mercy of our gracious Lord, our triune God, we were called to extend generous mercy to others. So whatever way we choose to do forgiveness with one another, may it be rooted in God's forgiveness for us. Then watch and see the divine work of healing take place. Amen. God bless you all.